Welcome to LabMist.com and our lab video series on Cisco ASA 1000V. You can find a complete list of ASA 1000V video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletter to receive the latest video updates. In our last video, we have already gotten started working on Edge Security Profile by configuring basic ACLs and PAT on our Cisco ASA 1000V in the VNMC mode. In this video, we will configure the rest of the available security policies except VPN, which we will discuss separately in the next video. Here's our lab setup. We have a redundant pair of ASA 1000V installed and assigned to an Edge firewall with basic security profile. For the test server, we have Web1, Web2, and NMS at the IP of 32.33 and .16. Some of the configuration that will be performed in this video includes connection timeout, IP audit, application inspection, and TCP intercept. We will be modifying our ingress ACL for the outside interface that we previously configured with the permit IP any any to just basically only allow web access to our web server through the HTTP and to expose our two web servers to the outside we have to configure a static NAT. And for Web1 with the IP.32, we will be NATed to 128.32, and Web2 will be NATed to 128.33. We're still going to have a catch all pad at the bottom that will translate all the source IP to the outside interface IPs of the ASA. So we're going to go straight to the service policy. So here under the policy management service policy, and we're going to pretty much configure everything on the app one level. We're just going to work our way down. So let's start off with the connection timeout. So we'll click Add Connection Timeout Policy, and we'll call it CT for Connection Timeout F1 Default. State is enabled, and then we'll add the rule. You know, since we're doing both TCP and UDP, we're going to call it TCP UDP. And this is where you can adjust the connection timeout value. So for the TCP idle timer, Instead of one hour, let's change that to 30 minutes. For the half close, let's half that from 10 minute to five. For the idle UDP, instead of two minute, let's make that 30 second. And for the ICMP timeout value, let's make that five second. Okay, so if you wish to send a reset, to idle connection, you can check that as well. Just not going to check that at this time. And anything down below is grayed out. That means it's not configurable. So let's go OK and then OK. Next, we're going to go to the IP audit. And we already have a signature policy configured in the previous video at the Edge device profile at the DC1 level. Here, we're just going to go and do the audit policy. So click on that. For the name, we're going to call it audit app1. Default, and then when you add the rule, let's call it audit drop and log. And drop refers to a attack class that we're going to choose to drop the packet. And for in informational class, we're going to choose to lock it. Okay, and again, anything down below is not configurable. So click OK and click OK. Okay, move on to the next item, which is NAT. We say we are going to configure a static one-to-one -one NAT for our two web servers. So to do that, we go to under the NAT policies, and then the one that we have configured in the previous video with the app one web. And currently all we have is a PAT rule. So on top of that, we have to add two more rules. The first one will be for the NAT web one. And for the source, we want to make sure the IP is equal to 10.0.1.32 which is the IP of the web one. We're not doing any destination address translation here. And this time not action instead of dynamic, we have to choose static. And then we have a new object group for that. So we're going to call it map 172.16.128.32, which is going to be the outside IP. And for the actual IP, it's going to be the same 128.32. And then we select that from the drop down. We go, and we want to also enable DNS as well. Okay, and then we'll, let's add one more before we reorder our net rules. Next one is for Web2. And, and the source IP is 10.0.1.33. And net action is static, and we have to create a new object group for that called net or map rather. 
16, 120.33. Okay, and then again, we choose from the drop down 33 and enable DNS. Okay, and let's make sure the path goes all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and then the more specific NAT rules or one to one NAT is at the top. Click apply and then OK. Okay, so that's for the NAT. Next, we're going to move down to packet inspection. Here we'll click the add packet inspection policies and we will call it inspect F1 default enable add rule. And for the name, let's just call something like basic service. So we're just going to select a couple of service here. So things like DNS, let's say FTP, HTTP, ICMP, and let's do CFTP. Anything else is going to leave unchecked. And again, the bottom section is grayed out. So click OK and click OK. And again, that's got to do with the application layer inspections to make sure the application or the protocol is valid. Okay, routing, we did that again back in the Edge device profile. The next one is TCP intercept, and this is basically to prevent ASA from being attacked or any attack that's co coming through the resource behind the ASA, where there's a sync flat attack. For the name, we'll call it TCP F1 default, and then we'll add the rule. Let's call for the total connection. You can see we have two options right here. So total, let's pick a number, maybe a 8192, and then connection for per client, Let's make it uh, 1024, for example. And again, you can choose pretty much any value you think it's suited to your environment. So for the name, just going to come up with something that reflects the underlying config total 8192 and client 1024. And OK. And the last thing we say we want to do is to update or modify our ingress ACL from the outside to only allow HTTP to our two web servers. So we'll go back up to the ACL and under the ACL policies, we'll create a new ACL policy. We're just going to do new ones and then just swap it out. So for the name, we call it ACL outside to web. And then we we'll add the rule. And for the rule name, we we'll call outside to web. We'll click permit. For the protocol, we only want to allow TCP and source any destination. We already have, I believe, a object group configured so it's going to be a member of and this is again back in the VSG video we have a object group called OBJ web server that includes the web 1 web 2 by the IPF.32.33 and the other thing we want to include here is the network port and make sure it's equal to 80 for HTTP click OK and we'll click OK Next, we're going to create the policy set for that. We'll call it from outside app one. And then we'll select the outside to web. Click OK. Actually, let's go back and put the deny all at the bottom as well. So from outside app one. And then at the bottom, we'll have the deny all. OK, and then now we have to go back to our Edge security profile and add additional policies that we just created. So go back to the outside. First, let's start off the outside and the ingress ACL before we had the permit all. Now we have the one for the from outside app one that only allows the web traffic to the web server, the TCP port 80 and the deny all. And then we're going to modify the security profile for the web. And let's go through this ingress. We leave that alone. For the NAT, I believe that still is the same. So if you expand that, we have the two additional one-to-one -one NAT at the top. And for the advanced, we configure the packet inspection policy with inspect app one default. For the connection, we have the CT app one default. For the TCP intercept, under threat mitigation section, is TCP app one default. 
and for the IP audit policy is audit app one default. Okay, so as soon as you save that, and let's make sure the profile gets applied successfully. So to do that, you need to go back to resource management, and then under edge profile, you select your firewall, and you can see the config state is applied. So always a good idea to come back here and double check and make sure it's applied and there's no faults or anything. That will basically tell you that our config should have at this point been pushed down to the ASA. So if you go back to the ASA, let me restart the session and log back in. Here we can do show run policy map and just go through and see what has been configured for us. You can see there's a lot of config. There's a policy map for every security profile interface. For example, that's for the outside. That one's for the SP4, got SP1 here. I believe for the web security profile interface, it's SP3, which is one right here. And that's why we're seeing these TCP intercept policy that we configured. If you remember the name, total 8192 in the client 1024 with the set connection with the embryonic connection max and per client embryonic max. Okay, and this is the inspection policy that we created with only a handful of application, DNS, FTP, HTTP, SMP, and TFTP. Now for the connection timeout or with the CT here, you got TCP, connection timeout, a half closed idle, and another idle. And you can just look at the class map and see what exactly protocol that it's matching. Okay, so for example, if you want to look at show class map, a show run class map, so as you can see, it's matching by access list. Now let's do show run include audit. And here again, we're dealing with the web security profile interface, which is SP3. For the informational and attack, you can see the for the informational, we just do the locking, which is alarm. And for the attack, we want to drop. And then these names get tied to the interface. Before we do the, some testing, let's do one last show command, which is show NAT. And now you can see the two static one-to-one -one NAT for our web one, web two servers has been inserted just right above the pad or dynamic NAT right here. And again, one thing to note is you can see that the VNMC or ASA seems to, by default, configure the NAT statements under the section one with the twice NAT. And there isn't really a way for you to choose which section of the NAT you want to place these statements or configuration under. So everything just basically by default placed on the section one. So let's begin our testing with a web one. So I'm going to bring up the console to web one. Again, let's do a quick basic ping to the ASA inside interface 10.0.1.1 and it doesn't seem we can ping that. Let's see if we can try to reapply the port profile to the host. See if that helps. Let's go to again manage host and then we'll select that. Next, next. And the last, I think we need to move this NMS to that anyway. So let's go ahead and do that under the web. In web, and then just going to reapply to both web one and web two as well. Click next and finish. Now, see, we start getting a ping. Okay, so here's our ping. So, one of the things that I've seen when you make changes to the active service profile, sometimes you have to reapply just to make that change to take effect. It's just more like FYI. That's why when we apply the port profile, things are starting to work again. So, just look out for that. Okay, so we can see we can ping the ASA inside interface. Let's see if we can ping the other web server, which is web2, which we can. Next, we're going to ping the upstream switch. So let me hop onto that and do a debug ICMP or IP ICMP. And let's try to ping 172.16.128.1. See, we get a reply back. And if we look at the debug message, you can see the switch now is seeing the traffic is coming from a 128.32, which is the one-to-one -one static NAT IP. As okay, so we know, the static NAT is working. And at the same time, make sure we can still ping internet. 
Just to note that we, although we have locked down our ingress ACR on the outside interface to just allow the web traffic, it still allowed the ICMP reply to come back through the firewall because we have turned on the ICMP inspection. And now on the, let's hop onto the web two also. Let's go, let's just go through the same series of tests. You can ping the inside IPs. You can ping the web one. Let's try to ping the upstream switch. And you can see you can ping that. And the IP the switch is seeing is coming from is dot 33, which is what we want. And then last is the internet. Okay, so web one, web two looks good. Next, let me bring up the NMS. Let's ping the inside interface of the firewall. So 011, as you can see, ping that. And next we'll ping the upstream switch. Ping that as well, and then internet. And if you go back to the upstream switch, you can see the IP the switch is seeing is coming from is dot sixteen, which is the padded IP that we have as a catcher at the bottom of our NAT table. All right, so that's basically inside going to the outside. Now let's test in the other direction. From the outside, we know that we're supposed to be able to hit the two web server at port TCP eighty. So if you bring up the our RDP machine here, which is sitting on the outside in the VLAN 32. So just to show you. So the machine is right here. We're going to try to access the resources on the inside through the firewall. So first let's try to ping 172.16.128.32. This is not pingable. And if you go on to the ASA, which is timed out already. So let me go and restart session. And then you do show log. Deny. And see right here the four ICMP ping attempts that timed out shows up as a in the log. So deny ICMP source from the 32.40 going towards the 10.0.132, which is the translated IP or untranslated IP. All right, since we're not allowing ICMP to be coming in from the outside. But if you go to the web browser and then trying to browse 172.16.128.32, you can see we can successfully hit the web page on web server one, and we should be able to do the same for web server two. All right, so that proves that our, both our static NAT and ingress ACR on the outside interface, they're working. Now that we have gone through all those testing, let's do a couple more show commands just to see. So I believe our web service uh, security profile interface is SP3. So if you do show service policy interface, SP security, let's see, uh, SP003, and this one's zero right here. And let's just go through that quickly. Here at the top, we have the TCP intercept. So this, so far, there's no drops or anything. And then we have our application inspection. You can see we got some DNS packet that went through, as well as HTTP. This is when we tested the HTTP or web server on the inside. And we also have some ICMP inspection going on as well. And the rest of these are just basically application or TCP UDP timeout. And then if we do show IP, audit count. We see that we are IPS features also catch some of the echo uh, ICMP echo requests as well. Okay, and we probably want to specifically look for the SP3 interface right here. We also get an echo request. So that wraps up our video on ASA 1000V advanced edge security profile and policies in VNMC mode. Please visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.